Here's how to turn this into this using Dehancer Pro, which is a film emulation and grading plugin. I'm going to give you my initial thoughts on the plugin as well as how to use it, what all the different options are, and ultimately answering the question, is this worth the cost? Welcome to the Backroom Editor. Dehancer were nice enough to reach out and offer me a couple of free licenses in order to make these reviews, and they asked me to be honest, so I will be. If you are thinking of buying one of their products anytime, then you can use my discount code Backroom Editor, all one word, and that will get you 10% off as well as supporting the channel. In a nutshell, the way Dehancer works is to accurately emulate all the different chemical processes that happen to film stock, film development, and film projection. I really wanted to see how well Dehancer can handle different lighting scenarios, so I have come 6,000 miles away to the second tallest building in the world, Taipei 101, and I'm going to see what it looks like from the top at daytime, sunset, and at sundown. You'll get the most out of Dehancer if you're choosing to shoot in log or raw formats, but for these reviews I'm choosing to shoot with cameras using standard colour spaces to see if we can still get some value out of it. So it's sunset in about 10 minutes time, just waiting for the sun to go down and we'll do some more comparisons. Well, it's twilight now and it's crazy to hear that wind whistling through the bars, but the view is amazing. I'm not even sure if the pictures and video are doing it justice. Come back for the final test at complete darkness. Okay, it's night. Let's find out what the heads can do in low light. been to some tall buildings in my time but the views over sunset in tonight are just 10 out of 10 definitely would recommend that you come it's really hard to capture quality images though because this phone and this DSLR are not specifically designed for low light so can Dehancer add any value let's go and find out okay let's see what we got now I'm showing you Dehancer Pro which retails for about $199 or about 160 pounds. And that is a separate purchase from using their video plugin, which is about $400 or about 320 pounds. And that's still a separate purchase than the iOS companion app, which has either a monthly or annual subscription. Personally, I feel like those should be bundled in or greatly discounted if you've already really coughed up to have one or both of the image and video plugins. For Apple, at least, it does require a relatively recent device. It's free to download and you can export up to 10 photos of videos. Both of these kind of seem expensive. Now, I don't think I'd really be grading any 1080 or 4K clips on my phone. And so that just leaves me with the use case scenario of images, which means I'll only be posting it to social media and social media sites can press the image anyway. So is it really worth it? Well, you be your own judge. Dehancer does come with a large set of ready to use presets to create those various film looks. The bottom toolbar is wider than the screen, so just drag to scroll through it. Just grab any slider and start at creating your look. You can double tap to reset. You can see the before and after by tapping and holding on the image, something I always want to do. 
Okay, so I've got Photoshop 24.3 loaded and I have Dehancer added as a plugin. I'm gonna to go to the filter menu. I do have it here in my recents, but I would go to the bottom and load that here. So this is Dehancer's UI. I'll walk you through the various parts. Across the top, we have tabs for profiles and presets. We can toggle our sidebar. We have our settings, such as if you can switch graphics cards and other tooltips. We have the ability to restore the last settings you used, to clear all your settings, to undo and to redo. As of this version, you can't use the keyboard shortcuts to undo like you would in Photoshop itself. This toggles your waveform inspector. This button will scale to fit your image from whatever size your interface is to its native one-to-one -one and back again. And this button allows you to turn off the live before and after preview. Cancel, of course, takes you back to the previous screen and OK applies those changes to your photo and also returns you to the main Photoshop screen. So let's have a look at profiles. You can toggle on and off all the menus by using the check mark. And pretty much everything operates either on a slider or a drop down list. So let's have a look at exotic. And your profile, I'm going to go for the Produkin Gorskiski. I'm sure that's exactly how it's pronounced. And your push pull basically is controlling the brightness, the luma. Now you can favorite and you can reset. Now you have all your different choices of film profiles here on this side. Let's have a look at Fuji Color Natura 1600. It's a pretty nice look. But let's have a look at some of the presets. I want to load up the Fuji Eterna Vivid 500. I really like the look of this one. And I'm gonna start dialing in my exposure. I wanna really see what it looks like if it was darker, not bad. And if it was brighter, yep, not bad. I think I'm gonna go just a little darker. I wanna just focus on the city lights. Let's go down a bit. Okay, let's have a look if I move the temperature slider. Yes, that's more natural, but I think I'm going to go for a bit more of a nuanced blue. Moving the tint. No, I don't want it too blue, so I'm going to leave that largely where it was. Defringing, they're going to move the defringe just a little bit here and move the radius down a bit. Now let's have a look at the film developer. Now the film developer allows you to create your own chemical recipe for developing the film. It's useful for when you're dealing with an unknown camera. I'm going to boost my contrast here a bit see what we get there and let's lessen that now we can do our gamma correction now gamma correction determines how much the midtones are shifted towards the shadows or the highlights so I want to see a bit more of those midtones now the color separation of a negative film is determined by the color filters in the emulsion layers which is the sensitization of each layer and their order and in Dehancer, you can control the chemical component of the developer, which affects the sensitization of the emulsion layers. Now, to me, that looks fairly unchanged. But to a more experienced person, you may appreciate that tool more. Now, Color Boost increases or decreases the overall saturation of the image, and not just the most saturated colors as with color separation. This type of color enhance doesn't lead to clipping. Oh yes, very moody. Let's have a look at film compression next. Let's turn that on. Now, film compression is there to emulate the film like compressed tonal range. And what it does is it lets you fine tune the redistribution of the highlights. The resulting image should look more analog and becomes more flexible for further manipulation later with the exposure, contrast and film print profiles. Although it won't restore any blown out highlights, it can smooth out clipping and add texture there. Now, I don't have any blown out bits, so I'm just gonna move our impact around, move the white point and increase the tonal range and decrease the tonal range and move the color density. As you see, that one doesn't seem to do much. Now you notice that some of these sliders aren't really affecting the image very much. And that's because some of these sliders only really apply to certain situations and exposures 
or need to be used in tandem to offset a different control like bloom inhalation really go together. Right, let's have a look at expand. Turn it on. Let's move our black point. Really crushing the image there. Although kind of cool, I think I want to see more of my image. So we're going to bring that up. More of a washed out, hazy look. Move our white point. Almost looks like this was taken through a glass window at this point. So I'm just going to reduce that back. To something more like this. Now you can also change the color mode from normal to Luma and that will affect things differently. Watch what happens now. So that's much more crunchy and isn't really moving any of my colors around. I kind of like that, but I'm going to undo that. Now, interesting, if I try and command Z to undo or control Z on Windows, it's not actually doing anything. So I'm going to have to use my button here. I would really like if they introduced the command Z. Yeah. There you go, that's, that's something honest, it crashed. Is that Adobe's fault or Dehance's fault? I couldn't tell you. Right, but it hasn't saved my work, so let's go back to Dehancer. Okay, so print is choosing the medium that the film is printed on. So we've gone for the Kodak look here, but let's perhaps choose a Fujifilm look, and I have a Cineon film look, and then a linear one and the Kodak Endura glossy paper. I think I kind of like the Fujifilm one, so let's stick with that one. But we can move again these around, and you'll find that a lot of these options seem to have similar effects, but yet they are doing things that are in separate analog processes if you're developing actual film. So color head and print toning allows you to simulate the print head method. Now in actual film, you can choose different color heads and print tonings, and this allows you to simulate that. And so you can add a specific tint that isn't present in the original film stock. So this is more nuanced than digital hue corrections, and it can be limited to separate areas in the shadows, the mids, or the highlights. And what's nice is by enabling the gang control, you can move these all together at the same time for convenience, although that wouldn't really happen in the analog world. Move our shadows, push our midtones, and we'll pull up our highlights a bit. So film grain is probably what you've been waiting for all this time. I should note that real film grain isn't just overlaid on top of an image, but in fact, the image itself entirely consists of grain. So a dehancer is literally reconstructing your shot on the granular level. So it's using local color and brightness and doing complex physical modeling of film emulsion. It's actually kind of clever. Now you can choose a film grain that's accurate for your negative or your positive film print. And usually the smallest detail on film doesn't exceed the grain size. So I'm going to switch this from positive to negative and I'm going to up the grain to its max. I think that's a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to dial that right back down. Add some more. I'm going to preserve some of my resolution in the shadows, especially. And I can, if I want to switch to the digital method, but I don't see the point in that. We, we've got this tool because we want to go analog. Now, as you can see, halation's already turned on. I didn't turn it on. I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. I'm going to add some local diffusion. I'm going to amplify it and I'm going to knock the hue. And what's nice is you can turn on the mask mode and you can see where the halation is being added. So if you want to control it better, you can play with your sliders and actually see what's going on. So let's turn that off. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the blue compensation is important because halation tends to add an orange-red hue, but in this case, the city lights were kind of that color anyway. Now, bloom should be used in tandem, and again, you can have this mask mode, so as you start to play with your sliders, you should see some bloom popping out. There we go, and turn that off. There we go, that has a nice bleeding edge to this bloom effect on these buildings here and here. And finally, the vignette. Now you can add either a negative or a positive exposure to your vignette. I kind of like the positive one, so we're gonna leave that there. But I'm gonna play with the size of it just to let you see there. And 
move the feather just so it catches the edges. So it looks like I had a bit of light leak, perhaps almost. Now in Final Cut, you have an output control. It isn't a global opacity slider, but it does proportionally reduce or increase the effects that you've applied. And I don't have that here. I would kind of like that. So all of my effects are applied. Let's hit OK. There we go. There's my image. Now, if I want to apply that same effect again, effectively doubling it, I can just click on it. And there you are. You can see it doubles the effect really quite strong. Not what I want. What I have to do if I want to adjust it instead is I have to go back to the interface menu and dial back in my effects again. I'm just going to play with some of these other settings just to dial in the look I really want. So I'm running a 14 inch 2022 M1 Pro MacBook Pro and this system is very capable for me but I do notice that Photoshop is still a little laggy in showing the preview through Dehancer. So when I move the exposure you can see that I think I'm getting a change but when I let go of the trackpad I get a different result so just bear that in mind. Now I'm fairly happy with this result so I'm going to hit OK. And there you go I'm ready to export that and enjoy it and post it online. So that's how you can use Dehancer in Photoshop and my thoughts on it on its value. Now, if you happen to be a video editor like me, well, then you can check out my Final Cut Pro review here in the top corner. And if you think that you want to purchase the plugin, if it's going to be value for you, then you can use my discount code Backroom Editor for 10% off. I do get an affiliate kickback, but remember, it's about what you think you will find value in. I'm not trying to push anything on you. In the meantime, thanks for watching. See you later.